good morning, beautiful vlog. What is happening? Okay, I just set you in my windowsill. I woke up like two and a half hours ago um, at 6.30. It's nine o'clock now, so I've been up. I was just hanging out in bed for a little bit, cuddling with the cats. Then I got up and I did like, you know, some workouts, like Pilates kind of stuff. I fed the cats. You'll probably hear whiskey. Whiskey? I fed the cats and then she's been begging to go outside all morning even though we have the catio open. Andrew built a catio for the cats just so that they can go in and have like an open air area that's screened in so they can't like escape and get into trouble. Cause I don't let my cats outside without a harness on and like my supervision. So Whiskey's begging to do that now because that's just like her thing. She loves going outside with the harness. But it is cold out and I have stuff to do right now so I can't take her out. But the caddy is open and she could just go hang out in there but she's choosing to sit and meow at me. So if you hear a cat in the background, that would be her. I thought that I would vlog today because we have the biggest show that we've done yet. We've sold, oh, like 300 tickets, I believe they said. So that's amazing. It's a big day. I just thought I'd take you all along on this little adventure that we have going on today. Load-in is at six o'clock and unfortunately it takes me like two hours to get down there so especially factoring in rush hour which is five o'clock which I'll be driving through that during the time. I have to leave here by four. It's actually more time than I thought because I thought that load-in would be at like 4 30 and i was gonna have to leave at like 2 30 then so surprisingly i have a lot more time than i thought i was going to i need to blanch some vegetables that my mom sent me my parents have this farm in wisconsin where they grow it's just like a vegetable farm they have some fruit trees too but mostly vegetables they have chickens they want to get other animals but for now they are focusing on like organically grown produce so every time I go up to visit my family in my hometown. I come back with so many vegetables. I have just like a produce haul here. Like, let me just show you. I can't use all of this at once, so I really have to um, preserve it. They said that I could put the onions in the basement, just somewhere cool and dark, and they should preserve well. So I've got these. I have another basket of those red ones in here. And then I have a whole thing of yellow. Like this entire thing is just full of onions. So love that. Got onions coming out the wazoo. Three of these little squash. This is the last one. But those can stay. That's not what I'm worried about. It's the rutabaga that's in my refrigerator. This is a rutabaga. I don't know. It's kind of like, at least in America, I've noticed it's more of like a midwest northern thing like a lot of people don't know what rutabaga is some people were saying that it reminds them of like a giant radish and i can kind of see that but not as spicy as a radish they smell like broccoli to me like kind of stinky in a way but there's a lot of things you can do with them mostly what my family did with them when we were growing up is like put them in soups I've been pan frying it, I like it pan fried too. Or they were pickling some of it too. Whatever anyways though, I need to blanch it and then freeze it. Blanching essentially is just boiling it for a little bit and then soaking it in an ice water bath so that it like stops the cooking process. And it's supposed to preserve a lot of the nutrients and like the color and flavor and everything by storing it that way. But look at how gorgeous these are. So pretty, the colors are beautiful. It's also our friend's album release party show. So it's a festivus time. Anyways, the band is Kangaroo Court. You might've heard me talking about them before. We went on tour with them up in Wisconsin for like a short little weekend run. I also kind of want to make a cake, you guys, because it is their album release party. I don't know, it's just cause for celebration. Like, oh, for our album release party, we had a cake backstage and it was just like the vibe. Like it was great for photos, it was fun. It felt like more of a celebration. And um, yeah, I am in kind of like a baking mood recently or just a cooking mood. So I've gotten thus far. I decided I'm gonna make some vegetable soup and bring with, since I have so many vegetables. 
And then I remembered that I had this whole bag of potatoes too for my parents. Oh my gosh, okay, so I'm making the cake right now. It's about ready, I have the oven preheating, but I just saw that my package was delivered. I'm so excited, so I'm gonna go and get it. Okay, so I'm sitting on the kitchen floor. I've got the package, something that I ordered off of eBay, and I had been looking at it for a while, and I was trying to decide, because it was kind of like a bigger purchase for me. So I saved it, and I had been watching them for a little bit, and then, uh, they made me an offer and I waited till the offer wasn't available anymore. I decided that I did want them so I made them an offer, they didn't accept. And then I asked if they would just honor the previous offer that they had given me and they did. These Fly London boots, I'm obsessed with them. I had been looking for some motorcycle boots and nothing was really just like calling my name. Like I have seen some before that I really like. Nothing online for sale that I was seeing was really calling my name and then I came across these and they're so cool they have the fly on the straps I kind of want to wear these to the show today I didn't think that they were going to come today um, the seller said that they were going to but then the tracking was telling me that it was going to show up tomorrow and then I looked this morning just out of hoping and dreaming and I saw that they were in my town and out for delivery so um, yeah, it kind of put me off to a really good start. Okay, the outfit I get is kind of weird, but the shoes are freaking cool. I love them. Okay, while the cake is finishing cooking, I did two separate layers. Um, so it's just the top part that's finishing up in the oven. I'm gonna start, yes, I'm gonna start getting ready. This is Birch in case you haven't met him yet. He's a darling dear. That's done, I made the dumplings, put those in the soup and they're cooking. I'm just like a low heat. I already made up the frosting. So I just figured I'm gonna start kind of getting ready for the show. Then I'll have to take the cake out. The cake will have to cool. I think I'm gonna start doing my hair and makeup and then pack my show bag and kind of get my outfits ready. It's kind of raining out, so I'm trying to decide what I'm gonna do with my hair. I'm really excited about my outfit. I actually have so much to tell you about it. Okay, bad news, but we have to leave now apparently because Andrew has to pick up something um, for the show, so. I don't know, but I'm just gonna bring a bunch of necklaces. This is what I'm wearing for the show. My amazing, wonderful friend, Leia, made this set. She just started up her company again. She's doing like a little rebrand. Um, I'm bringing these shoes. Here comes Andrew. <laughs> and these tights, and I just have to pick out an outfit for wearing to the show. This is editing, Devin. I'm popping in because I was running short on time here, and I wanted to give the proper shout out to my friend Leia Yanita and her business, Leia Yanita Rocks, who made this amazing outfit that I gotta wear for this show. She absolutely killed it. Like this piece is everything and all of the energy that I hope to emit. She told me that she was going for a mix of Shuri Curry and Raggedy Ann, and I feel like that just perfectly describes this outfit that she made for me. Well, now she is reopening and she's doing a little bit of a rebrand. Like I had mentioned, her new shop name is Leia Yanita Rocks. And 
this shop is going more for like a glam rock and punk fashion inspiration. I am obsessed with that combination. I would say that is a pretty good way of describing my own style. So I have been loving everything she's been putting out. Everything is custom, so she does all sizes. She's so inclusive and she focuses on using scrap textiles, which I think is just so important and so brilliant. So I highly encourage you to go check out her socials, follow her there, uh, check out her website if you're in the market for some new clothes. She can make you something perfect. She can make you something one of a kind. Check out the link down in the description. Thank you so much, Leia, and enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, this is my leaving outfit. Um, this little tunic kind of thing, these vintage shorts, the boots, my knee-highs denim jacket. Let's go. Oh yeah, and these sunglasses. Now I'm getting out the cake. It looks so pretty. Ah, I'm really, really happy with it. So now I just have to figure out how to get this there. Two hour drive, mm, no big deal. We're in the car. The car is packed. We meet Andrew and I. Hey. I changed because I was not feeling my outfit at all and I was like, I can't deal with this throughout the night. We have to run to Target quick because we have to get a thumb drive for the audio recording part because we are having three videographers come and film this show and then of course you're going to want to have some decent audio to go along with it quick Starbucks stop because I haven't gotten any fall drinks yet this year and it's a must. We're at Lincoln Hall! It's official! We're here! We're here! Two-ish hours? Two and a Woo! Woo! Al's missing. <laughs> she fell back, but we're going to grab the merch. Oh my gosh, it's really happening. Chris made that. I did not, but I wish I did. It looks just like it though. We gotta go line check. Oh, look at who it is. A little lover boy, perhaps. Oh, lover boy. Come here, lover boy. <laughs> Come here, lover boy. Oh, how do you call your lover boy? Lover boy. And if he doesn't answer? Let's go. Oh, lover boy. And if he still doesn't, doesn't answer, baby, oh, baby, my sweet baby, you're the one. Bam, 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 bam. went down, took, Chris took a tumble. <laughs> Seat's a little wobbly. Chris! <laughs> I can say too, I for sure would love some more of my guitar and my monitor and more of all of their vocals to my monitor would be perfect. Thank you. Show fittings. 
by Victoria. Stylist Victoria. Yay! Extraordinaire. My favorite beans. Our savior. Nice and fitted. Ooh. Casual straddle. <laughs> Backstage of babes. The first thing we said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I saw those last times in between. Yeah. 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 It's so good. Why not me? Got my eye on you. Oh my goodness. I need that. Courts of arms are going on. Look at them. Get that weird Mackenzie Fowler. I'm your newest fan. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Congrats on the new album. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting nervous. Where are you guys? I'm not even nervous. Okay, I figured. so dead right now it is the morning after the show or not so much morning it's noon but i have been awake all morning basically i've been laying in bed though because i feel horrible i hurt every single place on my body my head hurts my body hurts everywhere i'm like i don't even we were on one last night. It was so freaking fun. I feel like the show went super duper well for everybody. I had so, so much fun, but I also did get trampled in the mosh pit for the first time in my life. Editing Devin again here, and I'm just popping in to say that editing this last part of the video back that I made the day after the show was actually kind of rough to watch because now upon talking to other people, um, I'm about to describe to you kind of what happened that night. Um, I'm kind of cutting myself off here just to say that I am pretty sure that I got a concussion. I have been super duper clumsy ever since, like clumsier than I feel like I normally am. Um, I've been really forgetful, like editing this last little bit of video was, interesting because I kept like just losing track of what I was trying to say and um it explains why I was so so tired the other day I was really really tired yesterday too um which was Sunday and I still kind of have a lingering headache today I've never had a concussion before so I didn't really know but a couple of people said that I might have gotten one um so yeehaw right <laughs> i was super dizzy after the fact but i thought it was also because i was drinking and um i mean definitely the two combined hitting your head and drinking do not mix at all but i'm pretty sure that i got concussed again i'm gonna live i'm fine but just please be careful out there please be careful when you're going to shows um and just be mindful that other people are around you and that you don't really understand or know like their limits or what they can handle or what they're okay with. So just try to be respectful if it is a mosh pit and people are in there knowing that it's a mosh pit. Like I went in knowing and I, I mean, I fully expect to get 
a little beat up and like roughed around and I don't really blame anybody. But the thing is normally in a mosh pit, like if people fall, you stop and you pick them up and it's like everybody is looking out for each other. Like if I saw somebody fall, I would not not stop to help pick them up if nobody else was picking them up. Like my first reaction is to grab them until I see somebody else already grabbing them. And I just think that that should be everybody's um, first instinct in that kind of a situation. Like we really just have to be all for each other in areas like that because somebody can get hurt and it's not about anybody getting hurt. Nobody wants to get hurt. Nobody should want anybody to get hurt. Um, and if you do, you need to get the fuck out of there because it's not for you and you're like somebody who needs help. So go get help. Don't go in a mosh pit if you want to hurt people, okay? But anyways, I'm taking away this situation with just going to be more mindful of other people even more so when I'm in the mosh pit and then at our shows, I'm just going to really try and remind people to keep an eye out on each other and have each other's backs and if people are getting rowdy just like remind them that these are people around you and you need to freaking chill out again not blaming anybody not really blaming the people who stepped on me not blaming the bands at all um at all at all like like nobody could see what was going on it was a big circle pit of just a bunch of people running around Andrew didn't even know that I was getting trampled, you know, and he was like watching me, but um, anyways, I just had to pop in and say that because I felt like I wasn't speaking coherently in these last clips that you're about to see. And um, yeah, I feel like I figured out why. Now I realize what people mean when they are like, oh, I could not be in a mosh pit. Cause normally what I have always experienced at least like my own personal experiences with a mosh pit like people aren't trying to hurt each other it's just fun like jumping into each other and you know being a little rough but but i got hurt <laughs> bad um so the king record had just started playing and it was packed in lincoln hall it was so so packed and i was going up to the front to get a good view and like get in the pit a little bit. And when I got there, it was like this ring, like a big open circle where people were just running around. And I was like, well, that looks like a lot of fun. So of course I jumped in there. Um, and the floor was so freaking slippery from like all of the drinks being poured. Um, I fell on the ground and nobody picked me up. And I literally got trampled under so many people just running around in a circle. And it was slightly terrifying. At first I was like, okay, I'm gonna get picked up. It's fine, it's whatever. And then all of a sudden people were stepping on me and I'm not getting picked up. And um, it was a little scary, especially when this much bigger person like ended up on top of me, like sitting on my face and I was having a panic attack. And now I have the pain and <laughs> all of the bruises and cuts to remember that moment. I got out of the pit and I ran over to Andrew and I found Al there too. And I was like, I just got trampled. And she was like, no freaking joke, dude. You are literally bleeding. My elbow was bleeding and my hand was bleeding. And um, it was a lot. I'm feeling very freaking sore. It, it was crazy, but it was a fun show. I feel like a good way to kind of end our Chicago season. Hi, Andrew. Just the charger. Okay, love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. I feel like it was a good way to end our Chicago season of shows for this year anyways. Um, but it was absolute madness and I'm feeling it right now. Um, so I'm probably going to lay in bed all day because uh, I... And in so much pain, which sounds so freaking ridiculous. Like I feel like such a baby right now, but it's just the truth. I'm gonna eat an apple because that sounds amazing. And lay in bed with my cats. 
the outfit. Everybody loved the outfit last night. So thank you so much to Leia for that. I was just like hyping her up all evening, getting to tell people about the set and talk about her shop, which she's reopening. I just want to say thank you again so much to Leia for creating that and giving it to me. Um, I will cherish it and I can see myself using it for so many future shows and projects. And with that, I also would like to thank you for being here and watching this video and coming along on show day. I hope you all are having a fantastic day, whatever you're doing, and I'll catch you in the next one.